What's going on world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at this week's forecast, seeing what the stars have in store for us. So, let's get into it. As always, shout out to all the Aries celebrating birthdays this week. Pay close attention to this energy as it will be with you all year. Now, this is a pretty good week that we got going ahead. We're, we just had our full moon in Libra, and that normally indicates a, you know, a time to kind of move into rest and relaxation and reflection and all of that. But Aries is fire energy, okay? We got Venus and Mars connecting this week, and, and just a whole lot of Mercury now in Aries, which I'm going to talk about. So I, I kind of overall, y'all, this week, we should seek to... If, if you've been in flow, don't don't let up. Keep pushing. If you if it's been hard for you to get there, there's tap into this energy and allow this to, you know, help you get in the game because it's a lot of productive energy at play. So first big thing we got to address is that Mercury, my man, is finally out the sign of Pisces where it had went retrograde. And, you know, Mercury doesn't do its best within Pisces. It's it's actually was, at least for myself, I can say it was, it wasn't as tough as expected. But the nature of the energy and me being Mercury dominant just, it, it definitely had me in la-la land for a little bit. But I was able to channel some, some great spiritual insights. But now Mercury is in Aries fire it's it's alive all right just imagine you know like you've been out the gym you took like a week or two out of the gym you you rested you you ready to get back in the game you really ready to flex that muscle and mercury is that mental muscle so our minds can really be more fired up than usual and mercury starting off its transit by sextiling saturn and aquarius which Mercury and Saturn aspects are really, really great for concentration, guys. And part of what I was saying, like with Pisces, where it was like, huh, kind of like just hovering in the air, is not really being able to get a direct thought in or or or, or really feel the need to engage in, in practical manners, just like floating. But Mercury and Saturn connecting really wants concrete understanding or concrete results from one's work all right so whatever you're working on this week whether it be things around the house personal projects seek to get more organized all right organize your thinking like i've been telling people during this quarantine time make sure you're reading make sure you're reading and you know cultivating uh habits of of discipline within that mental okay because when you're alone and in your downtime, spirit speaks to you. But now with Mercury and Saturn, we have a real way of seeing the practical use for the downloads that we've been getting from spirit. All right. So Mercury sextile Saturn, that effect will be here for a couple of days. And it's going to be really, really good. Then we got Mercury going to um, square this north node, which is at the last degree of cancer and it's soon to be in the sign of Gemini and of course I'm going to make a video about that we got about a little less than a month before the North Node makes that transit into Gemini so this is really a time of really seeing like re reflecting on this North Node transit and, and seeing how things have changed in regards to your home life your emotional security the expressing of your emotions and, and, and overall, like what I was like, say the comfort zone. Have, where is your comfort zone now compared to where it was before? Have you gotten out of this comfort zone in this time or have you fell more into it? Okay. Uh, so like I said, Mercury is going to square that North node, which is going to really uh, initiate some action and, and some real thought behind giving us things that we didn't necessarily see before so we can have ideas powered towards um, things of the north node but with at the same time 
this can come about in a maybe not so you know uh, pleasant way all right it can indicate arguments with you know loved ones siblings um, uh, emotional things that are just on our mind but they need to be addressed so try not to overthink anything but rather like I said before Mercury and Saturn organize it, it see the proper meaning of what is going on and then Mercury is going to connect and conjunct um, Chiron 2 in Aries and at this point is, is going to be leaning into contact with both Mars and Venus so, like I said, this is motivation on a mental level as well, and it can show the healing of conflict through a will to really get in there and discuss, like having the confidence and the directness to discuss the things that are bothering us. So, things can be healed within that regard, okay, or we can have ideas of how to heal that, okay, but like I said, at the same time, it could... It can also indicate, you know, frustration and, 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 and lashing out. But it's all really about how, how we channel that, that energy. Okay, so Mercury connecting with both Mars and Venus, great for the mental. And then Mars and Venus connecting with one another. This is, this is great from a personal standpoint, just for creativity. Airy, um, Aquarius is a higher genius, an air sign. Gemini, an air sign, learning, curiosity. So to think, we this can really be an aspect of having lots of ha-ha moments or learning something, even going back and seeing something that we didn't see before within our studies and really being able to see the higher perspective uh, behind it. But it's great for innovation, man, feeling creative. So, you know, if you are one of those people who haven't really found your niche, within what to do during this quarantine time, this can be it. That's why I said it's not a time to really like, like just relax, okay? And even if you've been out of flow, you got to keep trying because for all of us, this is, it's a lot of, it's a lot going on out here. A lot of, I saw last week, a lot of people pass away. But at the same time, I want those of us here on this journey to, to really stay in alignment and keep fear away you know, and, and and keep seeking to figure out, look at this time as a gift and figure out how you're, you're going to take advantage of this gift you've been given. Because things are going to go back to normal or somewhat normal eventually. And then once you do, once it does, it's a matter of, okay, what am I going to do now? So I hope y'all are meditating and really, you know, gathering some some energy. So Venus and Mars is great for that. It's also great, you know, in terms of getting out there and meeting people in terms of, you know, relationships. Obviously, we got the quarantine going on, but remember Aquarius um, represents technology, the Internet, things like that. So naturally, online dating would be good. You may just meet someone via social media, you know, and it could be. It could be rather meaningful and, and we're, we're feeling flirty and we're feeling more confident, all right? So we're limited, but there's still ways to really get the most out of this energy, okay? So then, speaking of Venus, okay, Venus is now in its shadow period. We have a whole month until Venus goes retrograde. And I strongly, strongly suggest during this shadow period, especially if you have planets aspecting Venus as it transits start reflecting you can start by reflecting on what occurred during the last Venus retrograde how that played out and you can also just start noting what what is happening during this time are you meeting new people how are these new people making you feel you know what are you, what are you learning okay all of that because these themes, Venus is going to be hanging out here for a little while now, all right? So there, whatever transpires now are going to be things that will kind of be magnified and highlighted throughout the retrograde. So it'll be real, it's a really good time to learn. So like I said, grab a notebook and start making observations of how things 
uh, are going down. Okay, so this week, waning phase, we got we got uh, Moon going into the sign of Capricorn, and it's going to go into Aquarius, and there's a lot of energy here. So the Moon is going to be highly um, stimulated this week. So once again, while it's in Capricorn, it's a time to to continuously get organized to put in some work in what whatever areas of life we need to light a light a fire under yourself and, and ask yourself how am I going to achieve more you know don't worry about the finances but think how am I going to create uh, more finances and like I had spoke about before tapping into the idea of abundance cultivating that abundant mindset uh, at the least all with this with the economy you know, looking crazy and the government looking crazy right now, it's leading towards a reform. So give some thought as to where you where you're going to fit within that reform and how you can prosper from this. Okay? And then it goes into Aquarius, which is gonna further stimulate that inventive energy of of, of the Mars and Venus dance. Alright? So it could be very, very, very productive if you allow it to be a very creative time. I would say just be mindful and, and lock in, all right? So, y'all, this is my interpretation of this week's forecast. Feel free to chime in. Let me know what's going on in your world. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do so. If you need a reading, holler at me. Till next time, peace.